Hey guys, how's it going? Remington here, and today I'm going to be going over a really awesome feature in Blender called Vertex Painting, and how you can use it to actually modify where materials go on your 3D model. So we'll go ahead and start off by opening up Blender. I'll be using Blender 2.77a. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything in the startup scene. Now this does work with Blender Render and the Cycles rendering engine. So I'm gonna use Cycles because I'm more familiar with that rendering engine. I'm going to start off by creating just a simple plane because I'm just going to be doing this on a plane as an example. You can use your 3D model or anything as an example. So I'm going to go ahead and move my uh, 3D view up a little bit here and I'm going to open the node editor on the bottom because we'll be using this soon. And since I'm using a plane, the vertex painter works off of vert vertices, so the more vertices, the more accurate your painting will be. So I'm going to switch into edit mode and just subdivide my plane. A few times. Now you can see I've got these really nice fine details in there and that's all we want. We don't need to go too far with it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new material and I have just a basic diffuse material right now. Um, so we'll just delete that. Actually I just want to delete the diffuse not the material, out material output. So I'm going to add a, actually <laughs> we shouldn't have deleted that. I'll keep the diffuse and we'll also add in a glossy and then we'll add in a mix shader just so we can mix these two together and get a decent result as well as having the factor to adjust it which will be necessary later. So if I switch into rendered mode now, you know there's nothing too fantastic about it. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to enable pro lighting skies which is a really awesome add-on. Um, just basically a bunch of really great HDRI skies. I'm going to try and find one with a bunch of detail. I believe 4 has a bunch of nice clouds. Yeah, 4 has a bunch of nice clouds. So as you can see, it's somewhat glossy, it's somewhat diffusing, just like you'd expect because we're mixing a glossy and a diffuse. But say I only want part of it to be glossy, I want the other part to be diffused. Let's go and switch back to solid view, and I'm going to change from object mode to vertex paint mode. Now if I press T to open up my tools menu over here, uh, we have a couple different things that we'll go over in a second. I'm sure plenty of you are familiar with this kind of uh, layout, but I'm going to come into my um, object data, I believe. Yes, object data tab. And you'll notice down here we have this thing called vertex colors, and we have a group right here. If you don't have a group, it's really simple to add one. Just click plus, and you have one. So what we're going to do is we're just going to rename this. Since I'm going to be using this to define where part of it's going to be glossy and part of it's going to be diffuse. I'm going to name this diff slash gloss because it's relatively, uh, I mean, self-explanatory diffuse slash gloss. So uh, I'm going to use white for the diffuse and I'm going to use black for the gloss. So I'm going to make the majority of it glossy, but I'm going to make just a nice little uh, smiley face here. A little lopsided with the smile there. And you'll notice I'm just using this simple RGB little circle here to adjust the colors. So now if I go ahead and switch back into rendered mode, you'll notice nothing changed. And that's because we need to add in a attribute as our factor. So I'm going to go ahead and move these down just a little bit. And I'm going to come down to add, input, attribute. And then we're going to type the name of our vertex color group over here. In my case, it's diff slash goth, diff slash goth diff slash gloss there we go gloss just like that i'm going to use the factor as the factor and now you can see that actually i must have inverted it on accident but you can see it's glossy everywhere else and then it's uh, diffused where i drew the smiley face and we can swap our shaders down here and now you can see it's glossy where it is and um nice and uh diffused everywhere else and this would be something really fantastic for creating a mirror or something close to that and you can see I have some edge stuff uh, or some fading around the edges and um, another thing we can do is we can actually add in things in between so I'm going to switch back to solid mode and we can add in something that's like gray so let's say I wanted to make him have a nose no uh, didn't mean to switch into bounding box mode there if we switch back into render mode you'll now notice that he has eyes and a mouth and his nose but his nose is a little bit less um, less glossy because it's a closer mix of the two different shaders because the factors changed by the attribute now if we made it mostly white and you'll notice if I try and paint like this it won't actually update if uh, you need to do that you just need to switch back to um, 
solid view and then back to rendered and now you can see it's a lot more glossy than it or a lot more diffused than it is glossy now this isn't the only use of it you can't just mix shaders you can also add things or mix things like color so um, in this case I'm going to add a, um, a mix RGB node here I'm going to choose two different colors I'll choose uh, cyan and or cayenne however you pronounce it and magenta just kind of close not perfect because those are our real primary colors remember that and um, I'm going to use this as the color for the diffuse and the color for the glossy and then I'm going to add a attribute and I'm just going to connect the factor now we have diffuse slash gloss so if we wanted it to have the same thing um, as the or the same drawing as the uh, last one if we switch into render mode you can now notice that it's blue but say we wanted to differ it say we wanted to have two separate vertex painting things what we can do is we can come down here and click plus like I did earlier and we can change this to C slash R in my case or M since so it's cyan and magenta so now I can do C slash M and once again it's not going to update until we switch back into rendered mode here actually it looks like it copied the data from uh, diff slash gloss so I'm just gonna go ahead and completely draw over this and I'm going to just go ahead and draw my own thing so I'm gonna draw maybe like a gradient coming from the right corner so it's gonna start off like that get a bit lighter 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 and then we can blur these two get a bit lighter almost done get a bit lighter and then white and then I'm just going to grab um, oops I didn't mean to do that uh, you can use different colors other than white and black but they don't work very well um, because most of the time it just ends up I mean just like mashing them together I'm not sure how this blur tool works but you know well there we go there's our basic little gradient so now if we switch back into rendered mode you can see that it slowly but surely it's not very obvious because I didn't do the gradient very accurately it's got very sharp curves um, or very sharp contrast so you notice even though this was a very light gray right here like if we switch back it's like a very middle gray it still has barely any magenta in it but you can see it mixes together just perfectly and our beautiful smiley face still has its same glossy properties as before now that's not the only thing you can do you can also use it to adjust other things like a bump map or a normal map you can use it to mix multiple different materials together I mean you can essentially use it to do whatever you'd like you can use it to mix two different textures together you can use it almost as a um, something like substance painter where you're painting textures onto an object you can do that except you can do it right in blender and I just think that's really awesome and it's a really underused feature that I've seen in blender so thank you guys for watching I hope you learned something new from this tutorial and remember I upload a new video every Wednesday and Saturday so if you'd like to see more content like this be sure to hit subscribe and also be sure to like the video if you did learn something new so once again, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Adios.